Off the Sussex coast, there were once vast underwater forests. Known as kelp, it was home to a wealth of creatures. Now, only pockets of these life-generating forests remain. Casualties of changing fishing practices, which damaged the seabed, and other possible factors, like climate change and increased sediment in the water, which blocks the kelp's light. In March 2021, the Sussex Inshore Fisheries and Conservation Authority secured a landmark ban on inshore trawling to let the seabed recover. This will be regeneration of a wildlife habitat on a, on a huge scale. The area we're protecting is 270 kilometres squared of seabed. was passed in March. Um, we've been super busy, you know, it's been a, an intense six months rising to the challenge of studying the marine ecosystem and getting that baseline data that's really crucial for us to understand how the seabed is changing and recovering. Here's a look at the environmental research being done by the partners in the Sussex Kelp Restoration Project this summer. Sussex IFCA have been doing some video surveys to monitor any changes in habitat following the introduction of our bylaw. We've been using the ROV deploying off our ship Watchful, where there used to be some historic kelp beds. Uh, so we're, we're going along a transect at the moment. We're trying to get some baseline data that we will be able to compare in future years to see the changes in habitat. So right now, where there used to be quite healthy kelp growing, is actually quite depleted. We're seeing quite a lot of bare pebbly ground. Uh, we're looking for the species of kelp um, and what other algal species there are. We're just going past some right now, I think that's some saccharina. So kelp beds are really vital nursery grounds and that's why we really want to see them come back so that we can ensure a long-term sustainable inshore fishery. And I think the really interesting stuff is going to happen in sort of five, ten years down the line when we start seeing recovery of these populations of species. My role in the project is to look at the genetics of uh, kelp populations in the area. Over the summer, we've had a team of divers snipping little pieces of kelp that we can then do our genetic analysis with. We really want to understand how the remnant populations we have in Sussex are related to um, wider populations across the south coast. Understanding where those are coming from is an important part of um, managing the recovery process. We're looking at a small section of kelp frond. You can see the little twinkly stars. These are tiny kelp spores. Little baby kelp emerging from the parent plant. So these little spores have got an exciting uh, adventure ahead of them. As autumn comes, the kelp start to reproduce. They release millions of spores into the water. Mixing with the plankton, the tiny kelplets will be swept far and wide by the currents. They can travel hundreds of miles. As storms pound the coast, mixing up nutrients and oxygen, it creates the perfect conditions for them to grow and then settle in the seabed. It's why we're optimistic that we hopefully will see a kelp recovery in the future, 
but it's also why it's really important that we understand where this mother load of kelp spores is going to come from. And that might be more than one location, but um, multiple locations is going to be really good for genetic diversity in these populations. The more genetically diverse we see, the better chance we've got of a long and healthy and sustained recovery. Globally, kelp covers five times the area of coral reefs. It's declining four times faster than our tropical forest. Here in Sussex, we've got 4% of the kelp that we had back in the 80s. Given the current climate crisis, understanding the role of kelp in storing carbon is of huge interest to us all. I've been doing a lot of work on blue carbon with a specific focus on kind of mangroves, seagrasses and salt marshes. And we know quite well how much carbon is locked away in those blue carbon ecosystems. We just don't know for kelp. We know that it's a highly productive ecosystem, i.e. it locks away lots of carbon very rapidly in its biomass. But what happens to that carbon after the biomass starts to break down, which we don't know. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the first of a series of cores from 40 sites uh, around the, the sort of near shore Sussex coastline. We're going to be diving to about 25 metres, banging the cores in, digging them down, and then uh, removing them and bringing them back up to the surface for analysis. Those cores will tell us how much kelp carbon is actually locked away in the sediment. Oh. Yeah. Amazing visibility. Got the cores, which is great. Yeah. So that's uh, about 50 centimetres uh, of sediment and we're suspecting that's going to be about 150 years worth of uh, carbon deposition in this area. If we do find that carbon locked away in those nearshore sediments, we'll be able to identify exactly what areas that's in and potentially think about extending that uh, level of protection that we have in this nearshore area. Understanding the role kelp plays as a carbon conveyor and in climate change is key. But what's happened here in Sussex is also an urgent wake up that we must protect more of the UK's seabed. Healthy kelp forests generate life, oxygenate the water and support sustainable inshore fisheries. They are vital for our future. After decades of trawling, biodiversity in Sussex is severely depleted. Sussex University is establishing a baseline of exactly what species are here. So every single creature underwater um, gives out its fingerprint, its DNA, and we can collect water sample in different locations and we can capture their presence. So thanks to this technique, we're actually able to have an idea of all the little creatures that are swimming along our coast. We have selected our um, sites in order to match the um, trolling exclusion zones. So we started from Seaford to Shoreham to Bognor Rocks and then Selsey Bill. And we also have a bit of a control sample area, which is Low Wolf Cove in Dorset. So this area is still healthy, still where we see the kelp, and we are hoping that Sussex is going to look like that. And we've actually just received um, the analysis of the samples that we collected over spring. We have the 42 species of fish that we have, um, were able to detect, 
We have sea bass, for example, which is a commercially important species. We have cod species and we have sprat. So these are quite um, expected. And also we have nine different species of decapods, crabs and lobsters. So this is very exciting. So this is our baseline. We have an idea of what it is that we have now and we're hoping that the habitat and the species there are going to improve. This kind of technology is absolutely mesmerizing because from the small sample of water, we can actually have an idea of all the creatures that are swimming in the area. The eDNA findings are backed up by static camera surveys at sites all along the Sussex coast. Today we're out um, just off Selsey Bill here. We're going to deploy this baited remote underwater video and we're going to drop it in the seabed for about an hour. It's got a little bit of mackerel on the front to attract some uh, fish. It's got three cameras on it that record what species we see. Look at that, beautiful. It's really, really clear today. We've planted it out in 28 different sites here on the Sussex coast so far. We've got an idea that uh, some of the most common species that we see, like conger eels, for example, cat sharks, it seems quite depleted. We'd expect probably to see a bit more. We're seeing what we may think is the middle predators are dominating the environment. It, this is theoretical. We've got to analyse the data fully with the students uh, and have a look. But really, we'd like to see some of the top predators come back. We'll be monitoring it over the next few years. Uh, hopefully recovery is what we're expecting to see. As summer draws to a close, IFCA and the Sussex University team head to a new survey area that has never been trawled. What they find is extraordinary and gives real hope for Sussex waters. We're going along a transect at the moment. We're going through some really healthy looking patches of kelp right now. It's some of the best I've seen. It's really exciting. There's quite a lot of coverage down here. And there's even some inquisitive bottlenose dolphins that have come to have a look as well. Dolphins! Dolphins! Well, I just saw three or four going past the screen. Dolphins! Um, and from what I can hear outside, it sounds like there's quite a lot outside jumping around. It's pretty, pretty crazy, crazy. we're here yeah. on a good day. I think it's a pretty special, special spot. And I think if we're going to see any natural kelp recovery, then these natural populations are going to be really important for, for sourcing that. This is actually the first time I've seen such a large kelp bed here in Sussex. It gives me great hope. I think now we've taken some of the pressures off, we're going to see nature really restoring and bouncing back. coastline has a future and the chance to restore. We're at the beginning of an incredible journey and the hell won't recover overnight but what happens here and what we gain in understanding will have a huge impact across the whole of the UK. At a time of ecological and climate crisis, we have to restore nature at scale. This project is a shining example of that.